called Another Saturday Night, inspired by the Sam Cooke song. On her way back from the theatre one night, she boarded a crowded train going south at London Bridge. It was late in autumn and the windows were wet with rain. She stood by the glass partition, very aware of herself, small, a black hat close to the scarf, her earrings a little too bright. She was relieved to be alone again after the conversation of the evening. It never came easy to her, only with certain people. As the train pulled out and she glanced into the carriage, she found someone watching her. He was sitting in one of the booths straight ahead, wearing a black raincoat, his face round and weathered, breaking towards middle age. It took her a few moments to realize who it was. It was Eddie, or should she call him Addy? She didn't know which name he used these days. He was different, faded. The past rushed out to meet her. With a mountain urgency, maneuvering past the other passengers, they found their way towards each other and hugged in the aisle. The rain, he said. That old gap in his teeth when he smiled, it still affected her, but the glitter in his eyes had gone. I haven't seen you in years, she said. Eddie was the gold on the other side of the river. Lorraine was 18 then and he was six years older. She and her friend Kate had a car with a slow puncture. They drove into town at weekends. Petrol in the tank, the equivalent of a travel card. The radio turned up high. Kate's lipstick varnished with gloss. They wore trainers and stonewashed denim, cheap sequins and crop tops. They never knew what they were going to find in those musical basements as they stepped down to the bottom of Covent Garden, away from the night lights and into the disco lights and the beautiful drumbeat darkness. Five pounds each is too much, Kate said at the door. We'll give you two and get the dance floor going. Underneath the piazza, Anita Baker sang peppery songs. Soul to Soul replied with bass, with beats. The Pasadena's boys with their quiffs, quick cartwheel, cartwheels on the dance floor when the funk said jump. Eddie was there with his boys that first night. He seemed to know everyone in the building, especially the girls. They snaked and curled around him like bracelets in their chiffon, their lace. Lorraine was no match for them. Next to Kate as well, she believed she lacked something feminine, some kind of knowing, a physical pride but she could always dance. Into Eddie's circle they wandered with their pink drinks, raising their arms at the heights, turning. His eyes were bright and he had gold in his mouth. He invited them to a party here at his place across the Thames. I heard you got married, he said. Yeah, I did, what about you? I've got a son, that's all. I've got two of those. My days, you look good. The parties took place once a season or so, someone's birthday or New Year's Eve or the return of summer. Eddie and his cousins had a flat on the fourth floor. It was further south than they'd ever been, through the Deptford tenements, a little deeper still, swift they went, expectantly over the bridge. As they climbed the stairs, the music drifted towards them. The red bulb naked in the hall, the living room was the axis, all the furniture cleared out. Behind the turntables, Jink, his name was Julius, but everyone called him Jink, the youngest cousin, bent low over the record with a black shine spinning near his ear. The people there were elegant. They were somewhat older and more sophisticated than Lorraine and Kate. And they put this down to an exoticism of the South, that they were more in tune with the culture, the islands, the continent, more connected to the codes of their parents, a finer generation of dress and mannerism. By midnight, the place was full. Stephen welcomed in the drinks, the middle cousin with the long hands and white shoreline teeth. Eddie was the master of ceremonies. He wove through the rooms, falling into conversation, touching the women gently at their waists. The thing about him was that he was sensual. He was not handsome like Stephen, but there was a heat and a wisdom inside him that brought people near, as if to warm their hands. He looked at a woman, a 
as if she were wax and he flame. His wide, cushiony, curvaceous chest and a thick, embracing arm.